Hello YouTube and welcome to another video on Rush the Wash. My name is Miguel, I'm going to be your host and I'm the one who's going to be painting the miniatures for you to see how to do this easy and super quick technique. So my videos are mainly aimed at painters that, like me, have a huge pile of shame they want to chip at and they just want to finish that as fast as possible. Or those of you who are new to the hobby, you will really like to get your miniatures painted but you don't really have the time or the motivation or the means to learn all those advanced techniques that take years to master. And the third case is for those of you who would like to finish a unit or a miniature for a particular event that is upcoming and very close, close in time and you don't really have the time to waste and you need it now. So if you want decent results without having to get into the trap of eBay Pro Painted, okay, you have come to the right place. But before we start rushing these washes and seeing how I paint my zombies, please, 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 please hit the like button. And if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe. I have a very regular schedule on releasing videos, but I'm trying to improve on that. <clears throat> it really motivates me to see people engaging with me in my channel, seeing my videos, watching my videos, giving me comments, asking me questions. I really look forward to that every time that I release something and I really need it to paint all these miniatures. Believe me, I have a lot, okay? So lick those brushes. Get some new water on your cup, get something to drink. Do not drink the water from the previous cup. Get ready to rush the wash. Let's go. Time to start painting more miniatures, right? So let's start with Lead Belcher, the old faithful dark metallic color from Games Workshop. I'm gonna paint all the metallic parts on the miniatures, weapon, armor, whatever. And after I do that, I'm going to use this new one. I never tried it before. It's called Skeleton Horde. It's very similar to Seraphine Sepia. It works more or less the same. It's a little bit more thick. I like the consistency and with that I'm going to paint all the metallic parts, the different leather that I want to also make brown and some shirts, some things here and there, you know, just for the sake of some uh, difference. Here I'm going to use three colors. The first one is Apothecary Grey, the second one is Nighthound Gloom and the third one is Weight Watchers Green. And with this I divide the miniatures in three different groups and then I paint the flesh with each one of these colors. What I'm trying to achieve is three different tones of dead skin, dead flesh. And this is how you do it. You just paint the skin, the flesh, with these colors. And then after you're done with all the three groups, then you're gonna move on, on to the next step. Now I decided to choose one of my different flesh colors and in this case I decided to choose Gilliman flesh but whatever you have is absolutely fine as long as it's a wash and I covered everything I'm gonna say everything is all the muscles all the flesh no fear it doesn't matter believe me because this color is so nice it will go great with even the metal on, 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 on the miniatures it doesn't matter if you stain it or not that's what I'm using that big brush because I want to save time on this step and just want to get all these different tonalities. Rushing the wash is basically doing a one two. The one is creating this undertone and the two is creating the contrast, the color that goes on top. So here we go green, gray and dark gray and that's what we achieve when we put the flesh on top. Then I move on to blood letter. Blood letter here is gonna make a huge difference. Just paint all those exposed muscles, all those open wounds, the eyes, the mouth, all the different parts where you can see that the zombie has been damaged after death or maybe that's why he died. And that is gonna create a nice contrast between the flesh areas and the wounds. Here I'm painting, as you can see, the eye, the eyeball that is hanging from the face. This is a gruesome zombie. I love this figure. And the intestines that are hanging from his open stomach or belly. Here I'm painting the muscle fibers, the quadriceps, the different uh, parts that are open flesh, open wounds. And 
if I overdo it, as you see right now, I just put too much, tap it with my finger, gone. That's it. That is absolutely fine with these miniatures is absolutely fine. We want to rush the wash and we want to make it right. Here you go. Now we can move on to the next step. So here we have two different choices, Druche Violet or Magus Purple. I decided to go with Druche Violet, but if you have Magus Purple, fine. It doesn't matter. It's just whatever you have it in hand, okay? Rushing the wash is not about buying more and more and more paints. It's just using whatever you have there. I paint the nails. I give it a little extra oomph on those red areas with this purple. Purple and red go great together. Don't be afraid of mixing them every now and then, okay? It's a great color to give it a little bit more uh, interesting tones. And I just paint the flesh around where the wounds have been open because it creates the impression that there has been some coagulation in there and now it's rotten. So here we are, 60% of the miniature is finished. Now it's time to do something great, which is painting the clothes. Oh my God, I love painting clothes because you can give it so many different tonalities, so many different personalities, outstanding. So the first one, very easy, I used warp lining uh, contrast paint. And here I'm, I, I wanted to create a little bit interesting red. And the way I do it is with the old glazes and washes. Um, I just paint it with Fuegan Orange and then whenever it dries, I just go again with Blot Letter and that's how I can create an interesting red. But I'm pretty sure I haven't bought anything yet. I haven't uh, got any of the new contrast paints with red. I'm pretty sure you can achieve a very nice red also with those new contrast paints with red. If you have those, just go ahead. Here I'm going to use Gilliman Blue and Ultramarines Blue. Uh, double whammy again. One, two. The first one is Gilliman Blue because it's a light blue and it's going to create the nice undertone where I can start working from using then ultramarines. As you can see, I left intentionally some of the ridges, the ones that are the highest on the miniature and then I'm darkening with ultramarines. For yellow, I use Lamenter's yellow followed by Cassandra yellow. Same thing. First use the light color, then darken it once it's dry with another color that is a little bit stronger. Or in this case, I used on the previous one, the one that you just saw, I used the skeleton horde and then I gave it a coat of lamenters yellow to achieve a new, uh, a new yellow, a dirty yellow, a dirty hair kind of um, blonde hair. And here I'm just adding now the Cassandra yellow to the lamenters yellow, achieving a little bit more uh, depth. Contrast, Magus Purple, Shade, Karagor, Crimson. Here I'm gonna paint this guy's uh, shirt or whatever is left of it. And in here, what I'm doing is actually I'm darkening the red with one of those purples. Either one is fine for this. For this miniature, I didn't know what to do. So I cracked open my orc flesh and I said, you know what, let's call it a day. Let's give him this interesting green. No need to do two coats. Contrast is uh, very nice to achieve a very quick, very fast results. If you combine it with some washes every now and then, awesome. Griffon Charger here, I'm darkening the gray uh, clothes that I painted before with Contrast Apothecary White, okay? And that way we achieve a very interesting grayish, dark gray in the areas, light gray on the uh, higher areas and it makes a nice color. Then I can also paint with Contrast Griff Charger Gray, the boots that I didn't paint before, some leather that I didn't paint before, hair that I didn't paint before and after it dries I darken it with contrast black templar but if you have any other dark inks any other black inks or washes you can use that to darken those after the first coat of contrast griff charger gray dries the old faithful <sighs> agra's earth shade how much do I love this wash you guys have no idea I use it every freaking time I paint anything. So darkening metals, check. Darkening wood, check. Darkening leather, check. Darkening whatever, basically whatever, check. It is a great tool in your box. You have to buy this wash. This wash has to be in your uh, ammunition, in your 
in your repertoire of washes. So, so far so good. This is where we are at now. If you want to call it quits by now, you're fine. This is a great tabletop standard and you can use these miniatures immediately. If you have enjoyed the video so far, please like and subscribe. You can turn off now, but if you want to go the extra mile like me, let's start by doing some dry brush with Iron Breaker. So I'm gonna highlight those metallic parts with Iron Breaker in a dry brush. If you appreciate, if you really love the brush that you're using, please do not do a dry brush with your favorite brushes, okay? Just use an old one that you don't care about destroying. Dry brushing destroys your brushes. If you're a newbie, if you've never done this before, dry brushing is just putting a little bit of paint on your brush cleaning it on a towel and then painting with whatever is left. I'm gonna highlight the teeth, the bones here and there with Shafti bone. And for this, obviously, I'm not using my dry brush. This is a proper brush. Um, it's a Da Vinci Maestro. If you want to buy that one, you can see it in the link. And then I'm gonna highlight also the eyes and the teeth. One interesting thing that I just discovered for zombies, man, I, I, I wish I knew things like this before, okay? I use this one, Ethermatic Blue, a simple dot of that on the eyes makes the zombies look very, very scary, very gloomy. They look like Game of Thrones. And this is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite discoveries ever is the freaking sepia. Man, this one. Man, I use it so much. It is so similar to the old Games Workshop oh, washes of yesterday, man. You can find it in the link. If you ever need to buy this one, please go on the link that below. It's uh, a link to an Amazon store. Buying that in here will help the channel tremendously and you will get one of the best things that I have in my repertoire as well. I use it for darkening a lot of stuff, as you can see. And this is another one that I use. If you want to find this one, uh, please go to the link as well. As you can see, I diluted it quite a lot. And what I do is I just dab it. I just put it over there on the metal so i get that oxide that rusty effect on the zombie too much of it just tap it with your finger call it a day and there you go boom instant rust what the heck man so here we are almost finished you can paint the bases whatever way you want but because i'm gonna use them for warhammer quest i started with a drakenhof nightshade coat on the base and then i started painting the flagstones using your shafty bone and white scar first Draw the flagstones with a shafty bone, and after this dries, I highlight it with a white scar. As you can see, very simple method, man. In between those flagstones, I just paint a line of Abaddon black, and while that is going to be drying, I'm gonna get a thicker brush and I'm gonna paint the sides of my bases with that Abaddon black. After this, well, it's one more step, and then the miniatures you can call them finished and this is agrax agrax and agrax once again is just a little bit of extra magic on top of those flagstones make them look dirty so there we are they are waiting for a coat of my favorite varnish okay a lot of people are always asking me how do i you know seal my miniatures and what i do is i use testors uh, spray and first i start with a shine shine coat and then i go with dull coat okay and that's how i finish my miniatures so they are ready to be played with i don't paint for cabinets i play with my miniatures if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe you have no idea how much you help the channel just by clicking that freaking button where you say like and if you enjoy seeing stupid videos like this one where i talk a lot and i just tell you how to get your miniatures painted faster than ever okay subscribe and i promise you I will give you one video every now and then. That's all. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. And I hope to see you soon again. Bye, everyone. Cheers.